Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12 and this is a slightly unusual video, not what I usually do. Um, we've had a couple of comments from people about their changes over to version 12 and version 11 and of course all the mods and how the heck do we keep up and it's a really good question. So Liz Pliss, long time uh, viewer of this channel and commenter, um, made a suggestion that it might be useful for me to show you guys where to keep yourselves updated. There's only so much I can do and of course very selfishly I'm only keeping an eye on the things that are important to me. There are so many hundreds of modules it's not possible for me to keep up to date with every single one and I'd be doing a video every day just letting you know about what the changes are and you, you ain't got time for that. <laughs> I haven't got time for that. That's not going to be useful. Uh, also, um, I'm going to get this name wrong. Uh, I'm not sure if you're Ick Basil Basil or if you're IQ Basil Basil. Um, but uh, yeah, made a similar comment about um, telling which ones are updated and things like that. So uh, just in the test world here, and of course, I've got my active modules. Now in my world, of course, I can see down the right hand side which ones have been verified. Orange ones last verified for version 11 doesn't mean they don't work and JB2A absolutely does. I've not encountered any problems. Um, the black ones verified, no problem. Green ones verified for this version of Foundry. What's the difference between the green ones and the black ones? It, well, it says compatibility risk because it's last verified for version 12, but not quite the current one. Whereas this one is 100% up to date. So this is, this is, first of all, this is one way that you can tell. It's just by looking here. Now, let's go out of there and go back to our main screen because this is, this is a much better way of doing it. If we go to our game systems, of course, we can see what version we're on. Um, and obviously we have the option to update. Now, a lot of, there's been a lot of advice going around saying to people, do not update to the D&D Game Engine 3.2 yet because there are some twitches with it. Of course, I updated everything when I switched over to version 12. Um, I've not encountered that many problems, to be honest. Uh, and it's also had an extra update, so I'm happy with that. But anywhere on these, if I click on this information icon, I get a link here. And if I go to this link, it's going to take me to the GitHub. I'm going to come back to GitHub in a minute. OK, but you can do that for the game engine. For all of the add-on modules, now bearing in mind, this is showing me every module that I've got installed, not necessarily active, because this includes ones that I've looked at but don't use. OK, so we've done in previous videos. Now, obviously, update is the first thing to do to make sure we're on the most current ones and again from here we can very quickly see which ones are going to work for us and which ones are not going to work for us there we go uh, oh not quite updated chris's pre-mades there is an update for it but only for number 11 so if we look at chris's pre-mades again just here we've got that red telling us unsupported core version dfreds unsupported core version so obviously we can look here and instantly see which ones are working and which ones are not. But we can also go to install module um, and we can find ones that are available. So we've got Chris's pre-mates here, but I don't have Gambit's pre-mates. I uninstalled Gambit's specifically. Let's search for it. We know it exists. We know it's amazing. We know we want it. It's not there. Why is it not there? Because it's not compatible. So you're not going to be able to find and install ones that are not compatible with your version. I've updated version 12. I can't even find Gambit's version 11 stuff. There is no version 12, so I can't install it. So it is not remotely perfect way of finding out, but it is quick and easy. It's dirty. It just gives you a really good idea. Now, remember I mentioned GitHub. Any of these, let's pick on Chris's pre-mates. Hovering over that uh, information, that little eye icon, we can go straight to the GitHub. We're just going to open a different window. Now, the GitHub is the core place where all of you can see on screen. It might not mean a lot to you. Let's zoom it in a bit. Uh, we can see the actual release files. So we can see, yes, this is Chris. Okay, this is Chris who owns this module. We can see the other contributors down here, the other people that we need to love because, you know, these people don't do it in isolation on their own mostly they have lots of people contributing but we can see all the files that we don't really care about but you can also see when they were last updated four days ago 
scripts were updated four days ago. Um, changelog was updated four days ago, two weeks ago for these files. So straight away we can see this is actively being worked on and updated. Uh, if we scroll down, of course, there is a readme. It varies with every module, but it tells us a bit about the module. Sometimes it's instructions. Sometimes we've got this wonderful, hey, more support, go over to here. And I'll come back to Discord in a bit. But it tells you things like module requirements and things like that. And often there is a issue log. So just clicking up here, an issue log where people have put in where they've got a problem where things haven't worked and it enables the mods to fix it. So if you've got a problem, you can't solve it and you think it's actually a mod issue rather than a your understanding issue, you can sign a new issue. Always check to make sure that somebody else hasn't already reported it because we don't want these poor people wasting their personal unpaid time reading the same bugs every single time if somebody's already reported it. So, yeah, be respectful, just check that. Our oh, concentration check with Wild Shape that looks like the kind of problem I've got. Okay, let's read it. Is that what they're saying? Yes, brilliant. Maybe. I can add further information to help debug whatever that problem is. So issues are all logged there. If they're logged here already, they're known about somebody's trying to fix them. You just have to be patient, of course. Um, you can put in some requests and things like that. But the GitHub will tell you what is currently happening. You can see whether it's live. You can see the errors that are being reported. Occasionally, when we're looking at mods, and I'm kind of like, oh, that's not, it's not working the way I thought it would. Um, I can come straight to the GitHub and go, oh, right, okay, what's going on here? And we had that really recently with the uh, combat grid. If you remember, the combat grid wasn't showing up properly. And I came to here, it's like, I'm having this problem. I've tried everything. Can I solve it? No, I can't. I didn't come to here, of course. I went, <laughs> went to the correct place. Um, and I posted it as an issue. And within two days, it was acknowledged, it was looked at, it was fixed, and a patch was released. And I said within two days, it was actually within 24 hours. So it really, really does work. Just make sure that um, you're actually reporting appropriate um, things, not just spamming all over the place. But every single one of these, FX Master, we can just pick on that, is going to, again, bring up. This is the FX Master. You can see who does it. You can see when was it last updated. Um, a while ago for this one, but just two days ago. There we go. So you can see that they are being worked on just because only one or two of the files have been updated. It might be they don't need stuff. But here we go. We've got a table of contents. There's instructions here. Obviously, I'm not going to go through them. Um, but really, really important way to get information about what state your mods are in, whether they're being actively worked on, the uh, additional help links to those additional help and things like that so lots of ways to get to it but possibly the best resource um, is discord so all most of the modders just bring my discord over here um, most of the modders have a discord of some description so who have i got i monks I've got iMonks Discord here. Just want to be a bit careful. I'm not showing anything you shouldn't be able to, but this is a public Discord. That's why I'm on his announcements, not in any of the private areas or anything. They have an announcements where they just tell you, you know, there's welcome introduction, etc., like that. Module summaries is on here, specifically about active tiles. So sometimes bugs and things are reported here or they can be discussed here. Um, so you can, it literally, it's Iron Monk. If you search Iron Monk's, Discord in Google or Bing or, you know, if you're using Bing, have a word yourself. <laughs> Whatever your search engine is of choice, you can find the Discord. You can join it. Not a problem. Obviously, always read the server rules. Uh, they're nearly always the same about just be bloody nice. Don't be dicks. Um, but do read the server rules and you can just keep up to date with it. So I'm on Iron Monks. Why? <laughs> Active tiles, of course. <laughs> keep up to date. Uh, Chris's pre-maids. I'm on Chris's pre-maids. And this one's useful. He's got an announcement page. Look at the bottom bit here. You probably can't read it on screen. Update notes. Foundry version 12 is not supported at all at this time. Do not update Foundry at this time. If you're using Chris's pre-maids, we all know I'm an idiot and I've done it anyway. Likely safe for that D&D 3.2 version and Foundry 11. Version 12 update is a work in progress. So it is coming. It will get there eventually. 
but you can see this was the 15th of June. What is it today? It's the 19th of June. So only within the past few days, Chris has been still bug fixing, um, still putting in enhancements for the version 11.1. So you can just keep up to date with what's going on. The Ripper. We know Ripper's got tons of modules. So if you've got ones that you use from Ripper, um, this is probably the best way just to get you know, he's got an update bot. Camera dock has been updated. 3D canvas has been updated. Wall height was updated. And it's it's basically, this is a spam list. But if you've got it on your Discord, you can just, I mean, you can follow. Bottom right-hand corner, you can follow. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and get those bits you want. I've got Posny as well. Of course, Posny with MIDI QOL. Um, but also things like Time's Up and stuff. So again, announcements just telling us what's happening here we go 5th of june all of this happened you know things like breaking dnd version 3.2 some slight challenges and stuff but they're just keeping a running stream so you can find your developer for your mods your favorite mods and just follow them on discord you know and i know not everybody wants to be on discord but you know um <clears throat> let's go mr primate who does the dnd beyond importer uh, who's going to be very busy for a while with uh, all the changes to the 3.0 game engine uh, and, of course, upcoming rulebook changes for those who've seen the announcements of D&D &D 2024 um, and changes to the rulebook, the one D&D &D thing. Uh, it's a way off before that actually happens, but the hype is building. Um, it's going to keep some people very busy. But again, we've got an announcement here where we've just got we've just got logs of uh, of things that are being fixed and looked at so if that's important to you go and join it there is also just a straight foundry one okay so foundry vtt themselves have one and they have at this package release every time somebody who has a has a formal registered package or module every time they update it it automatically streams here. So this one is, I mean, there's going to be lots of stuff not relevant to you. Pathfinder, second ed, not relevant to me. Pathfinder, first ed, not relevant to me. SBC, not relevant um, for me. That's Pathfinder. Hero Lab Online, Pathfinder, not relevant for me, not relevant for me. Tokenizer, oh, hang on a minute. You know, Tokenizer has been updated. Now, it doesn't necessarily tell you what's been updated, but you know it has been updated. And of course, you can go, click on a link here to the update notes and go straight to it. Sequencer has just been updated. Okay, oh, we use Sequencer, so that one might be of use. But, I mean, there's lots of them. Lots of them. It is a bit spammy, this one, because it covers every mod for every system. Um, but if you can't find another way to keep up to date, D&D 5e Jump Calculator, if that's something you're using, here it is. Okay, so the Discord is really, really useful for all of these things. What else have I got on here? I've got Forgotten Adventures on here um, because I like to keep up with, oh, what are they releasing and just keeping my, my hand in on those. Not that I use a lot of their maps because I make videos and things, but I certainly like to keep up to date. Uh, and the last one is um, I said about that follow thing. So on any of these, Chris's pre-mades, if I go to his announcement thread, and I've got a follow button down here. If you have your own Discord server, you can subscribe to them. I've got myself a private channel called Mod Updates. You can see I've subscribed to Chris's pre-made announcements, Mr. Primate's announcements, the Ripper's announcements, uh, Posney's twice, apparently. <laughs> Don't know why I twice. Um, and the VTT package releases. Uh, and uh, oh, I've got Mr. Primates again for whatever reason. But what it means is, is when they're updating those, if we just look, Chris's premades, I'm seeing that bang onto my server straight away, so I can choose to get that list that is important to me straight here. So Chris's premades that came out the 15th of June, uh, and then yesterday, from when I'm recording this, yesterday Posney's done some updates, and it's just giving me these little things now. I haven't had a problem with Posney's bits um, since we've changed over, but it's still being updated and things. If I do encounter a problem, of course, I can see it. So really, really useful way to do um, your keeping up to date is, yes, run it through here. Just click update, see what updates for your version 
okay um, but yep you can also click on any of these eyes go straight to the github you can go and find that core information but what's being worked on generally the best way to do it is discord go follow your whoever it is that you want to keep up to date with um, you know and once they've updated it you don't have to carry on following them if you don't want to you can go right okay now D and uh, ddb importer is functional and working for me i don't want to be spammed with messages i can leave that server or unfollow or whatever you want to do of course you're not locked in it's a choice um, but that's just how my setup is so i can keep an eye on that and i can see things like oh and that's why i knew that monk's active tile triggers were suddenly like oh blimey he's updated it i'm on that let's let's have a quick look at it because it was one we were waiting for um, the next big one I'm waiting for is when Chris's pre made goes ding, that's ready. Gambit's goes ding, that's ready. Those are going to really help complete my collection that I'm using in my game worlds. Um, so we've had the conversation about Curse of Strahd and the fact that I'm using very little automation um, for this one. I'm using mostly core for the roles. Um, since you last saw this, I've made some updates. I've added my players in, so I've got all my players in now, ready for their, uh, ready for them to make their characters and things. I just put some a little uh, dice rolling ability here. Just hang on. I just wrote a little macro so that they can do their dice rolling uh, directly in here. Just click that. It's going to roll their stat dice for them. Um, as part of character generation and we're going to build their characters in here possibly haven't quite finalized that anyway i segue of course i segue i always segue don't i just remember to hide that again and clear that chat um so i'm not using an awful lot of automation but when they are doing character creation i want to make sure that they're getting hold of all of those racial abilities class abilities and everything else which means i either need to build their characters in dnd beyond and then drag them over because the SRD doesn't have very much. Um, so we go to character features, we go to classes, you know, pick on cleric. Um, we can add those on, but we haven't got all of the subclasses. We haven't got all of the racial features. We haven't got all of the backgrounds by default. Accolade, that's it. Okay, so by building in D&D &D Beyond, I can pull those things through. We know that they're not perfect with automation. I'm not using automation, so it's fine. But at the moment, I need to build these by hand. Chris's pre-mades will just make that so much easier because I can just drop all those things in straight away, build the characters within here better, and don't even need to go anywhere near D&D &D Beyond. So Chris's pre-mades is quite important to me um, because of everything it does for the automation and even not the automation, um, just having that stuff available. Right, I have um, wittered on... A lot here so key takeaways is look in foundry at those modules look at the github um, to see what's happening follow it to their faqs um, their extra supports but discord really is king of following your module creators and keeping 100 percent up to date with what's going on you might not care that much at the moment you might be kind of like, well, I'm in the middle of a campaign. I'm not updating until the end of that anyway. So it might not apply to you at this point. Um, and of course, if you are waiting to update, but you're waiting on very specific things, that's the way to do it. That really is the way to do it, is to go through and check those um, and have a little look um, on the Discord, find out what is compatible. I have failed to find what would be beautiful is a perfect list of every module that tells you what state it's in administratively it would be a nightmare to keep up to date because of how quickly things are getting updated and tweaked but it'd be really nice if there was one yeah can't find it if you guys find one please let me know anyway i hope that's been useful just how to stay up to date make the decision when is right to, to jump for you um you know don't update until you're sure it's going to be what you want it really is that simple there's no there's no points for going first in fact you make your life harder as i have demonstrated for you Anyway, guys, you take care. Hope that's been helpful. See you in the next one.